Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over how you can create a very nice and professional looking outro in After Effects. So let's open After Effects and let's get started. So my After Effects is open, so let's create a new project. Let's make a new composition. So for this one, I'm going to name it main just so that we know which one is our main composition. I'm going to be doing a width of 1920 and a height of 1080 at 60 frames. And the duration, I'm going to do about 15 seconds. However, you can change it to whatever fits your needs. Press OK. And I'm going to save it so that it doesn't crash. And I recommend you guys do the same just in case. OK, so it is now saved. And now it's time to create a background. So I'm going to create a new solid. Right click, new solid. And for this one, I'm going to make, I kind of want a blue background. So I'm going to choose that blue and make sure you don't have caps lock press so um you can look at the preview otherwise it like locks it all right cool so now we have that and i'm going to add some moving dots to this so we're going to go over to our rectangle tool and press the ellipse tool hold shift and make a circle and now we're going to select the layer and go to layer transform center anchor point and um I'm actually going to rename this, so I'm just click on it and press enter. I'm going to name this one BG so we know it's the background, and then I'm going to rename this one to circle. And I'm going to align it to the, um, I'm going to left align and then top align, and then I'm going to press P on my keyboard and add about 15, no, probably more. I'm going to add like 30 to each one, so it's 44, and then just do plus... 35 and it, it'll move it there i i like that way better like the spacing between the left and the top side so now we're going to open up the circle contents and we're going to add a repeater we're going to open up that repeater one and the transform repeater one and we're going to um add more copies um, you might want to go here, view options, and make sure you have layer control selected so you can see everything. I'm going to add like a hundred copies, and you could change the position around. I kind of like it like that. I'm gonna put to ten. I like that spacing. And then we're gonna add more repeater, one more, and we're going to open up transform repeater two, and we're going to make the x position zero, and then the y um the same as the previous one so i have two tens so i'm just gonna add two tens but to the y and we're going to increase the number of copies um probably a hundred and then make sure you guys save now we're going to close this and then press p on our keyboard go to the go to the very beginning of our composition our timeline and then press the stopwatch to add a keyframe and then go to the end and press this diamond button right here and to add another keyframe and now we're going to move move it up and then to the left like that and now as you can see we have some moving dots um but actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the fill color to something a little lighter than the background so we're going to press fill press the eyedropper tool and go into the background press the background so we get the same color and then I'm going to move it lighter like this. I think that's cool. So now we have that. And I'm going to add drop shadows. So go over to your effects and presets. If you don't have that, go to window, effects and presets. And then drag some drop shadow onto the circles. And then if you zoom in a little, you guys see that drop shadow. And just change it around to see what you like best. I usually like... 3.5 I think that's good and maybe increase the softness a little like um, actually no I, I like it like that so we have our background finished so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two and pre-compose them make sure move all attributes into composition is selected not this one and we're gonna name this one background so that we know it's it's the background you know and now we're going to add text. So we're gonna go over here to the T or press Control T on your keyboard and select the font you want. I'm using intro regular. And I'm going to write, thanks for watching. Of course, you guys can write whatever you want and just fix the size. Oops, I misspelled that. 
all right and then we're gonna select the layer go back up to layer transform and center anchor point and layer content once again and center it and now we're going to pre-compose this i'm going to name it text one it just helps me um be more organized and it'll probably be helpful for you guys too and make sure you put move all attributes into the new composition so now we that we have that we're going to go again over to our effects and presets and add a gradient ramp and we're going to change the colors i'm going to do a dark a pretty dark blue and then a, a light blue you guys can choose whatever colors you want it just looks better if you um, have a dark to light color and i think i like that cool so now we're going to pre-compose that and make sure move all attributes into the new composition is selected so if, it, if it's like this then select this and i'm going to change the name so i know what effect i just added and now we're going to um right click on the text layer and layer styles and add a, an inner shadow we're going to open up the inner shadow options right here and lower the opacity or if you like it how it was and leave it as is but i'm going to change it to like 25 and we're going to pre-compose it again um i'm going to call it drop shadow okay now we're going to do something really cool so we're going to go into our pen tool and we're going to create a line that goes across the text like this and we're going to oh make sure your layer isn't selected otherwise you'll just create a mask like i did so make sure it's not selected and we're gonna do this so hold shift to make a straight line and just make sure there's no fill option and increase the stroke the color doesn't matter so um i'm gonna make it that thick so 35 and then we're going to um Open th this up and add a zigzag. And we're gonna open up the zigzag options here and change the size to whatever you want. I'm gonna change it to smooth. I usually do um, corners, but I'm gonna try something new. So I like that. And we're gonna have that. And change the position to like, probably like right here or wherever you guys want. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the text by pressing Control D. And let's control A to select all of them and let's close all of them so it's easier. And we're gonna go into our track map options. If you guys don't see these options down here somewhere where my mouse is at, there should be a toggle button, something like that. Just press it and your track map should pop up if you don't see it. I have it like this so I don't have to do that. Okay, so selecting the middle text that's right here, we're going to select the track map and go to alpha inverted matte shape layer one and basically what it does is it cuts that part out of the text so that's how we have the text at the bottom that was duplicated and what we're going to do is we're going to add the effect called brightness brightness and contrast to the text that's at the bottom and we're going to increase the brightness so we can see um what we that stroke we just made and you guys can do whatever you want you can even decrease the brightness so it's darker but i like when it's brighter so like this i think that's really cool so now we're going to select all the text layers that we have pre-compose and we're going to i'm going to call it text with with line so that i know and now we're going to right click time no not time sorry right click layer styles and then we're going to add a stroke open up the stroke i'm going to add a white stroke i just feel like it makes it stand out from the background so there's like some really nice contrast so just do as much as you want i like that and it's not i don't know if it's just me but it's not censored so if your text isn't censored you can just open up all of these and just you know make sure it is centered um i think it's just me sometimes i just yeah it is centered okay so now that we have that i'm gonna add an effect called warp to the text to make it look nice so we're gonna add warp we're going to put the bend at zero make sure your arc horizontal and the vertical distortion could be up 
that's the one we're and we're gonna mess with the vertical distortion so i added 12 and i like that a lot and so we're going to pre-compose one more time um text we're almost done with our text our last thing we could add is drop shadow so i'm going to add that and actually that's perfect for me but you guys can change the settings if you want and then i'm going to pre-compose it one more time and call it text nice so we're done with our text and now we get to animate it so press p on your keyboard and we're going to move it up to the top like right here and then press s on your keyboard to open up the scale properties and so at the very beginning we're going to add a keyframe there and then we're going to go up 10 frames you could do so by holding shift and pressing the next frame button right here on the previous um panel and it goes up 10 frames so and then select um the diamond button again to add a keyframe and now let's go to the beginning and we're going to add a we're going to change the 100 to a zero so now what we have is a scaling effect however i kind of don't like this size so i'm going to move it like that and the text is kind of hard to see so i'm going to open up the background and i'm going to um make this opacity on the circles lower so you can do so by pressing t on your keyboard that opens up the opacity um properties and just lower it as you want so i like that there you go that's way better but that is very unsmooth so what we're going to do is we're going to select the keyframes go to um, right click keyframe assistant and then easy ease we're going to go to the graph editor, make sure we're on speed value, not value. And we're going to fix this graph. So I like dragging this to the left. So the right um, handle all the way to the left. And now it should be smooth. There you go. That's great. So now that we have that, we can work on our rectangles. To do so, we're going to go over here and select the rectangle tool. Now we're going to have to kind of eyeball this so i think something like that is fine maybe yes so then we're going to add stroke oops so now we're going to add a stroke make sure there's no fail and just stroke i'm going to use 40. we're going to open up our contents open up rectangle one and stroke one and we're going to change the line cap to round cap and the line joint to round joint. And then we're gonna add dashes by pressing the plus that's right here and just increase the dashes to the amount that you want. I like this. Okay, that's very nice. Now, in order to make it animated, we're going to have to set a keyframe on the offset that's inside the dash property right here. So press your stopwatch on the offset and then press you on your keyboard to open up that only that option. So then go to the end of your composition and let's increase it to like 225. And now you see the stroke is moving. That is probably too slow. So we probably want to increase it more so it's not too slow, but not too fast either. Okay, I like mine like that. Now I'm going to add some drop shadow to that. And um, let's see. I think that's really... I think that's good for me. So now we are going to pre-compose... Oops, pre-compose this. I'm going to name it Video Outline. Just to be more organized. And change the position of it. nice so now we have this and actually we might have to change the the size of this a little so to do that we're just going to to do that we're going to press double click the video outline and open up the shape layer and we're going to go into contents rectangle rectangle path one and uncheck this the constraint proportions button and we're going to make it make the height like that i think this is good it's just about experimenting 
so I think that's yeah so I'm going to put it like right here and now I want to add a little subscribe outline over here so we're gonna go over here to our rectangle tool and select the ellipse tool and we're gonna do the same as we did with the dots hold shift and make a circle that's about this big make sure there's no fill and add a stroke um, let's see 25 no uh, 45 there okay I I'm gonna do 45 and let's go to layer transform center anchor point once again and now we're gonna open up our ellipse one and then our stroke one change this to round change this to round and add dashes and we're basically going to do the same thing I like um, 80 there you go and so now let's click our offset stopwatch to add a keyframe let's press u let's go to the end and make it around 650 and that's good however since they're both going the same way let's make this one negative 650 so that way it spins the other way now let's add job shadow to that and let's make it about the same that's good so now i'm going to pre-compose this and call it sub circle nice so now what we're going to do is we're going to um we're going to open up our proportional grid by going over here and now we're going to align these two so i'm going to put the um, video rectangle um in the middle of these two so Let's close all these and select P on our keyboard for the video outline and the circle. And to do this, to make it in the middle, I'm going to move it up. And now I like the space between these two. And we're gonna do the same with this one, just so that it is centered. And is there the same amount of space here? No, there isn't. So I'm gonna move the video outline in closer a little so there's like an even amount of space here and here. And now we have this. This is like really simple. Um, I kind of don't like how fast this one is. So I'm going to actually move the keyframe up another 10 frames. So that's that's better. So the entrance animation for the sub outline and the video outline, I'm going to change the opacity. So select both of them. And press T on your keyboard to open up the opacity options and make sure you have both selected. Go to the beginning of your timeline and press the stopwatch to create a keyframe in the beginning. Then go up around 10 frames by pressing shift and going to the preview next frame button. And that will move it up 10 frames and press it again. Now go back to the beginning and how, make sure you have both selected and change the opacity to zero. And now we have this cool fade in effect. And we might have to tweak the position a little bit more. And maybe change the text position a little bit. Like right there. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to add some more animation into our text. So to do so, we're going to click the text, press P to open up the position properties, and then we're going to press out and then click the stopwatch on the position. We're going to delete this and put wiggle to seven. And now what that does is if I zoom in, as you can see, it moves the text around. It like it adds a nice shake effect and you can mess around with the numbers to add more shake or less shake i think these settings are nice though <laughs>